John Abendroth here with my latest Zoomcast, uh, sponsored as usual by uh, Original Joe's of Westlake, where I think our guest Spencer Levine has probably eaten in the past in the shadows of the Olympic Club and <laughs> San Francisco Club. You've eaten there, have you not? I was just there. At, I, um, I had the uh, sectionals of uh, the Open Qualifier Olympic last year, and uh, I just ate there that night. So, yeah, not too long ago. Yep. That's, that's, that's great. Well, yeah. listen, Spencer Levine is, has always been a great story, but you are now, man, oh, man, you're the story of golf, in my opinion. You, uh, you've played 350 events, and you've gone through all the gyrations that many of us have, and you've lived the dream, and then all of a sudden the dream comes true, and you win on the Corn Ferry Tour. Um, just hearty congratulations to you. Thanks, John. I appreciate that, man. And um, thank you for having me on. And uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's just it's it, it feels great. And uh, it's uh, yeah, I, I just I appreciate the fact that that you wanted to have me on, and I'm and I'm happy to be on. Yeah, cool. And and I love the quote that uh, or the story that you got there Sunday uh, for the Monday qualifier. Uh, you weren't really even thinking about playing, and I guess you had a buddy you could stay with in in Texas there. And, and you get through the Monday, uh, which are tough, you know, tough as hell to do. Yeah. And then uh, you shoot, what, 20 under par for the, for the tournament. And, uh, yeah. and, you, and you win it by a couple shots, not even, you know, didn't have to go through a playoff or anything to win. But, yeah. uh, but you won, you know, kind of going away, if you will. Yeah, I was, uh, it, was, it was kind of, I, I, like you said, I wasn't even really thinking about playing last week. Um, and then the middle of the week, I thought, well, I, it'll give me an excuse to stay with my friend. And, um, you know, it's just a one way flight from from Sac to Dallas. And I figured, you know, what the hell, if I if I make it great, if not, I get to hang out with my buddy for a couple of days. So who I hadn't seen in a while. So, um, yeah. So, you know, I get there Sunday night. Um, I didn't see the course. I texted a friend of mine who was playing the Monday. If there were any notes, he played a practice round. He gave me a few notes. And um, yeah, then I went out and, and, and played great. Monday and you know a week later sleeping on my buddy's couch we, we were the champs I mean it was just it was it was it was it was hard it was unbelievable um Sunday after we won we were hanging out I don't even drink anymore but like we were I was up we were both up all night like it was weird like we couldn't sleep we were just so like happy it was such a cool feeling it was like I don't know it was hard to explain but um anyway it was just it was one of the it was just an amazing week man I, it was it was you know out of nowhere and it was just you hear stories like this in golf from from people from time to time and um i'm just happy that i'm happy that I, that i could live it myself and i think you also sitcher with uh with the trophy that you either didn't know how to or forgotten how to hold a big trophy like that yeah i i, I hadn't done i hadn't held the hell of a trophy in a long time so uh yeah it took me a minute to figure it out but um yeah it was uh it was uh, it was a great feeling, it really was. And, and in one of the new traditions, you know, last week on the regular PGA Tour, they gave the plaid jacket. You got yourself a cool pair of boots. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I did. I got me a cool pair of boots, and uh, yeah, they're gonna on display that I was wearing were a little big, but they said they're gonna send me a uh, a custom pair to my house. So I'm I'm fired up. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I got thinking. I said, now, how do they know what size you are, and do they have like you know 10 different pairs and but that yeah. explains it yeah 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 that was the uh their um yeah the um i guess the trophy trophy boots and uh but yeah no i'm excited a couple of buddies at home were like you know saying the same thing oh man you got the boots so yeah it's pretty cool joined by spencer levine uh now a winner on the corn ferry tour and uh moved to 11th on their point list uh new california native living in elk grove area uh out in the sacramento valley uh, let's go back a little bit in history. Do I do I remember correctly? You made a hole in one in a U.S. Open. That's right, I did at um, the 2004 Open at Shinnecock. Uh, I was I was 19 years old, and it was my first hole in one in my life. So that was uh, yeah, that was a few miles ago. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And and again, let, let's let's go back a little bit where you know you turned pro 18 years ago, and you've gone through you know, all the, all the different tours, mostly domestic. Have you played overseas at all? Um, I played not on like a full-time tour. Um, 
just just tournaments where like uh you know british open i played a couple times and then i had a couple tournaments through through the pga tour in asia like the malaysia tournament a couple times and um but yeah ne never on like a never on a full-time tour anywhere overseas and, and you've had your regular tour card at one point or another and then you've played since it was probably what the hogan tour and then the you know all the different names and uh i can imagine all the I don't know if you've collected badges over the years, but uh, you know you probably could have a, a cool collection of the different events you played in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Uh, um, yeah. It was. Uh, I started. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah. When I first turned pro, I think for a, couple, for a year. Then I played up in Canada for a year um, on the Canadian tour, and then then the corn corn ferry tour, which was called the Web.com tour in two thousand eight. Um, then I got my PGA tour card that year. I think I finished maybe 22nd or 23rd on the money list when you got a top 25 and then had my tour card from 09 to about, I want to say 2017, 2018, something like that. And then and lost my card. And then I've been on what it is now. Yeah. The corn ferry, um, for the last couple of year, few years, um, with kind of mi minimal status, you know, playing a couple tournaments here and there when I can. So, um, I'm trying to think if the last couple of years, it's been anything other than called the corn Ferry. That's what I'm trying to figure now, but I want to say since I was back on the corn Ferry, it's just been the corn Ferry. but like you said, it's changed its name a bunch of times, but yeah, it's been, uh, I don't know. There's been a lot of miles traveled and a lot of golf in between. Um, I don't know. I'm just, uh, you know, people say it really hasn't sunk in yet. And, and I don't know, I, I just, um, I, it just feels great. It feels, I feel relieved and I feel a little bit different inside where it's not, I feel kind of a little bit more at ease now. Well, absolutely. And, and is this a one year exemption plus the rest of this year or two year? How does that work? You know, John, I, I haven't even, I don't really know how it works to be honest with you. Um, I, uh, I know that um, I'm, it, uh, it'll give me, the rest of this year, uh, um, for sure, you know, like I'm, I'm a full member now and this year and I can pick and choose my schedule and then, um, you know, not sharing what it means for next year, but I know if I can, if I can play well, um, this year, you know, continuing on this year and play well, I can get back on the, on the big tour next year. So that's the goal. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I, I hate to put thoughts in your mind, but you probably are thinking about, okay, you know, if I get a couple of top tens or a couple of top twenties that that'll, you know, give you enough money and points to, to get there. You have a feel of, you know, where that, where that fits in. But, you know, the old story is you, yeah. you know, you play well, it's, it's all going to come together. That, that, that's it, John. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, it's, it's like you said, yeah, you can do all the, the adding and all that stuff, but I mean, where I'm at now, you know, I'm almost 40 where I've been in my career and everything. It's like, you know, just the week I had last week, it's like, I didn't even expect to even be even thinking about that. Right. I was just trying to get in a tournament. So now it's almost like, well, I felt like I was playing with, you know, house money last week. And, you know, I, I see it basically the same now. It's just, I'm going out there playing golf. And um, like you just said, you hit the nail on the head. If you go play good golf, everything takes care of itself. And um that's the old cliche, but it's true. That's what it is. So I'm just going to go out there and try and play well. And um, if I do, I'm sure everything will work out. When you say house money, now you got 180,000 more house money. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, yeah. That's, that's nice. Uh, that's going up. That's for sure. Well, I, I have to laugh when I watch the, uh, the PJ tour, they're always talking about FedEx points. You know, rarely do they talk about money now with the, these designated tournaments, they're, they're back talking about money a little bit where like last week it was 3.6 million and, and, you know, they're, they're now talking about money, but I'm sure there's a, uh, a little, you know, birdie in their ear from the PGA tour media staff that says, all right, focus on FedEx points and all that. But uh, yeah, yeah, we all know money is money. So uh, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, no doubt. It's kind of funny you say that we were, um, I guess, cause you know, the, like you were just saying the purses on the, on the big tour now, well, and the corn fair have gone up, but the purses on the big tour now are just, I mean, it's hard to believe it. It's great. No, I think it's awesome, but it was pretty amazing how, uh, I remember I was, I was talking to my old caddy the other day. He called me, um, after I won and congratulated me and we were talking and, um, he, uh, we were saying how, I don't know, maybe, uh, not quite, maybe 10 years ago, five, 10 years ago, um, I was in the player, we were in the players championship and they were playing for $10 million. And that was the first time 
there'd ever been a tour event for $10 million. And like everybody was talking about, we couldn't believe it. And then I guess this year they played for what, 25 million at the players. That's right. So, I mean, think that's, we were talking about 10 million and then now it's more than, you know, dealt twice and a half that much. So it's, uh, I think it's great for the game and um, I think the players deserve it. I really do. I mean, you, you know, loving golf as much as you do and people who love golf as much as they do. I mean, they know how hard it is and know how, what, what, how good it is for these guys to get out there. And, and I think they, the guys deserve every penny of it. I really do. Um, it, it's, it's, I think it's great for the sport and I think it'll grow the sport. Yeah, I, I think back and I torture myself every year with a little contest in my own mind that I finished 25th at San Diego in 1975 and I won $1,278 and this year about 70000 And Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right, exactly, it's like, exactly. It's like Arnold Palmer and Tiger Woods inflation, so. Uh, yes, good. yes, exactly, exactly right, exactly. Mr. Levine joins me here, uh, Hooked on Golf, John Abendroth, Zoomcast, and uh, – so when are you going to get back home and get a little uh, little Sacramento Elk Grove uh, congratulation party? Well, we got uh, we got Florida this week and then Alabama next week and then the following week's week off. So I'll get home in a couple weeks and uh, yep, I'll uh, I'll be hanging out with my buddies. Uh, you know, one of my best friends he he owns a bar in Sacramento where where we all where all our friends hang out. So I think uh, we're going to go there and hang out and uh, I'll be. Uh, having a bunch of non-alc beers with them and uh well they won't be having non-alc beers but i will but uh yeah so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it john I am. let's talk about your golf game a little bit um again kind of old school uh mm-hmm. in the game but you kind of developed your own putting style uh with a split grip kind of partly side saddle where did that come from yeah you know it was funny i i was just um i went out one evening um to a course by my house just to putt and um i just you know it's funny when i when i was playing well on tour i was using the belly putter and um that obviously got got um banned but um since then i've i've uh, once that was banned on tour i still had a couple decent years um but the putting since the belly ban has been a little bit of a struggle for me just you know confidence wise and feel wise for whatever reason um but yeah, I was I was out putting by myself and I and I kind of I wasn't putting great and I was getting kind of frustrated. So I was kind of kind of in a frustrated state, just just gripping way down the shaft with my right hand, like almost to the putter head, like bending way over. And I started knocking them in all these short putts like and then I started realizing, oh, wait, these are going in. And then I thought, well, you know, I'm not going to get that drastic, but this this kind of bent over down the shaft kind of where I can see the line style for me. And as you know, putting is 100% the individual, right? I mean, it's all about what you feel. But for me, for whatever reason, I can start it online that way. And then I remember my dad had a putter in his garage buried underneath all the all the old clubs and stuff and um, the hammy putter. And it's, it's kind of like you said, it's a, kind of a side saddle split grip type of deal. And it's still legal. So I thought, well, you know, I'll, uh, I'll try that. And then since I've been using that, I've been putting really well and, and, a couple tournaments that I tried, uh, uh, just a normal arm lock putter that I was using. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't putt very well. So, um, I went back to the hammy and, um, and have been putting well since and, and, and putted really well last week. So yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of funny how it came to be, but you know, for, for golfers out there, just try everything, man. That's that, that would be my, my best advice. And don't, don't putt like anybody else. I mean, if you putt good, like somebody else do that, but only do what works for you. That would be my advice. To show you how my mind works, and I'm so, you know, involved with golf over the years, it's another Sacramento person that made that putter famous. You know who it is? Natalie. You know, Gold- I do. It was Natalie Golbus, right? Natalie Didn't Gold- she win? Yeah. She won on the, uh, isn't, yeah, so it's kind of weird how, like, Sacramento has a, has a, ha- has the hammy vibe. I don't know. It's kind of weird, but. I, I yeah. had one of those, and I loaned it to a buddy of mine that couldn't putt. I, I need to get it back from him and give that a try. Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny, you know, that, but it's funny how he didn't give it back, did he? No, he didn't. That's right. <laughs> I, I don't think he's using it, though, so uh, that's great. Hey, listen, Spencer, thanks so much. Say hello to your dad um, you, again, yeah. you know, over the years and and uh, Rod and, you know, the you know, just this is so cool because, uh, again, like I say, I've been through the Mondays and, you know, I remember flying to Hartford's note spots or one spot and, 
and then flew to Montana and finished third in the Montana Open. I got home and, you know, I was gone for eight days and I won $1,300 and broke even for the week. So, you know, those of us that have played or thought about playing, these are the stories that, that, that we want to hear. And these are the stories that really make it all worthwhile. And, and I'm just, I'm just betting that you, uh, you have some really cool success coming up. Hey, John, I, you know, man, I, I appreciate, I appreciate, I appreciate you having me. And I appreciate the fact that you wanted to interview me and anytime you want to interview me, I'll do it. So just let me know. Yeah. Cool. Cool stuff. All right. Great. Well, listen, right. Spencer Levine and uh, we'll follow you on the, on the uh, corn ferry and hopefully, I don't know, maybe see you at the AT&T and a $10 million event next year. Hey, I, I would love that, man. I would love that. I would love to see you there. I would love to see you there. Yeah, that's great. All right. There's Spencer Levine. Again, we're sponsored by a place that even Spencer's eating at, uh, Ridge Lake. And uh, thank you so much. Yeah, right on. Thanks, John. I appreciate it, man.